In the previous video, we talked about diodes. So diodes have two layers, an n-type layer and a p-type layer. And you have the junction, which is formed, and a depletion region. So this depletion region acts as a barrier for the currents to flow. But like when you apply a voltage greater than 0.7 volts, the depletion region kind of shrinks and it kind of disappears. So you have the current flowing and it becomes like a switch and it turns on when you apply a voltage more than like 0.7 volts. But if you reverse bias that, if you apply a negative potential, then the current doesn't flow. So the um, direction of the current or the conventional current, I should be clear here, the direction of the conventional current is indicated uh, in the symbol, so that is the arrow, and the arrow indicates the direction of <coughs> the conventional current. And here we are looking at another semiconductor component, which is often used, called a transistor. And there are different types of transistor, but like a very basic transistor is called a bipolar junction transistor. That's what we will start with. So in a bipolar junction transistor, you have three layers, an n-type layer, a p-type layer, uh, and another n-type layer on top of that. If not, we also have the other way around. We have a p-type layer. On top of that, you have an n-type layer. And then on top of that, you have another p-type layer. So there are three layers. And because you have three layers, you, you have two different junctions. So because of those junctions, you have two different uh, dependent regions. In general, when they construct a transistor, the emitter is heavily doped, which means it has more electrons. So the name emitter comes because it emits electrons. So it is an emitter. It injects electron into the other regions. And base is a thin layer. Uh, this is physically, it's a thin layer and you have, um, and it is also lightly doped. So, which means like you don't have like a lot of uh, uh, electrons or holes uh, in this case uh, because it's a B-type material. You don't have like a lot of holes in there. And collector is usually larger, so it's physically larger, uh, and this intermediately took some somewhere in between uh, the base and the emitter. So, the if you if you think of that as a diode uh, where you just have uh, two. Uh, substrates connected to each other. So this is having three substrates, so which can be kind of considered like a diode like that is connected in this fashion. Uh, one, uh, one is connected, the base and uh, collector are connected uh, with the diode and likewise the base and emitter are connected with the diode. So, but like it is connected in opposite directions. When you um, kind of connect the collector and emitter uh, with a power supply. If you see, there is uh, at least one of the diodes, like whatever fa fashion you may, you might connect in. Uh, either you connect it in, uh, say, uh, uh, a fashion where uh, the this diode is forward biased. Uh, if this diode is forward biased, then let's like, say this diode is going to be reverse biased. And if you kind of reverse that, if you flip the battery so this will be forward biased and this will be reverse biased but either way one of those uh transistor or like one of those diodes or one of these junctions are going to be reverse biased so just by applying a voltage across collector and emitter like this is not going to work so that's where this interesting base comes into play so before we get into that uh, I am going to also uh, introduce you to the symbol. Um, so here is a, the symbol of a transistor uh, that we use in circuits. So we have for the NPN transistor, so the direction here, this indicates the direction of the conventional current. For a PNP transistor, so the direction of uh, the current is shown like this, So which means for a NPN transistor, the current flows from the collector to the emitter. But like in a PNP transistor, the current flows from, again, we are talking about conventional current. Whenever I say current, it is conventional current. The electrons, if you see, it will be the other way around, okay? But like the conventional current will be flowing 
from the emitter to the collector. And often we'll be using NPN transistors. Uh, and let's go with another thing. So there are three pins, like there are different ways of connecting a transistor. So we will just see one common configuration, um, which is called the common emitter configuration, which is often used. So in this mode, like you can use it either as a amplifier or as a switch. So that is like uh, the application of uh, and a, a transistor. So what happens um, when you connect? First, let, let's concentrate on the collector and emitter. So when you connect, uh, it's always advisable to add a resistor um, so that like say, when it turns on, uh, so you don't want a lot of current flowing through the circuit and like damage your component. Uh, so what you will have to do is always uh, connect a resistor so that like it limits the current flowing through the uh, circuit. So for now, so the collector is connected to the positive and the emitter is connected to the negative and this is kind of the reference right now. And we also have another uh, circuit or another battery, um, so which supplies power to the base. So this is how uh, we uh, do a common emitter circuit. So why we call it a common emitter? Because the emitter is common with the base and the collector. So that's why it's called a common emitter configuration. So what happens when you apply it in this fashion? So when you just don't apply any base current, like for now, like just ignore like what is happening here right now. So what will happen is you will have um, the base which will be uh, like, which will which will kind of block uh, the electrons to flow from the elect uh, the emitter to the collector. So what happens like when you just connect uh, the battery? A small current will flow from the emitter to the base because the <clears throat> Uh, the same principle as before, like say that uh, it, it is a diode technically. So this diode, what happens is uh, it will be forward biased when you apply a voltage. When the voltage between the emitter and the base is like greater than 0.7 volts, a small current will flow. So this small current will kind of puncture the system. Like say, let's imagine that like this is a, uh, without any applying a voltage, like this is kind of blocked, a small um, let's say a, a filter blocks everything, like no flow of current. But like when you just apply enough voltage to puncture this uh, filter, then because of the force or like because the voltage is just pressure, because of the higher pressure like we apply in the collector and emitter, like what happens is like we push the electrons through the filter and like more current flows through the uh, current, uh, collector and emitter uh, terminals of the transistor. So that's what happens. So when you apply more, so when you punch a more, so uh, with a little more current flowing through the emitter and base, even more current like flows through the emitter and collector. So this is what happens in a common emitter uh, um, common emitter classific uh, common emitter configuration so if you see what is technically happening here when you apply a very small current a proportional current flows through the emitter and collector but like that current will be like much higher than the base current so using this as a base if you see there is a amplification happening. So if you apply a voltage, a small amount of voltage or current to the base, that kind of gets amplified and that appears across the collector and emitter. So this is an amplification mode. So let's see that as a graph here. So here we have one characteristics which shows the voltage VBE, uh, the voltage between uh, the base and the emitter, and the current that is flowing through it. 
So this is in microamperes, that is like very, very small current that is flowing through them. Um, so for different uh, voltages, say VCE, for like 10, 6 or 2 volts, the curve actually differs. But again, mostly when the, cur uh, when the voltage is greater than 0.7, it kind of turns on and there is a rapid increase in the current. So that is what we see. So when you apply this, so this current is kind of indicated here. So we can kind of like draw the line here. And here the IC is the current in <clears throat> in milliamperes. Sorry, just give me a second. Go back. Go back. Yeah. <clears throat> and what happens here is say for a particular current, like say for 20 milliamperes, the current with increasing uh, voltage VCE, that is the voltage across uh, the collector and emitter, it, if you don't apply any current, like the, uh, the current, the collector current is zero. But if you increase it to 20, milli, uh, 20 microamperes, then the current increases to a level, but like it increases until a point, like say, for example, in this case, so when it is around like 0.7, it is low, but like after that, like it increases and it steadies, it stays there steadily actually. So this is the average region, but like say over, if you keep on increasing VCE at one point of time, like uh, the diodes, like this will also break down. So there's also a breakdown region, but like we are not going to operate in that region and we are not showing it here. So likewise, with increase in the current IB, the current that flows through IC will also increase as we saw in the previous animation. So that's what will happen. So this is an important characteristics of uh, the transistor. So here, you have a few regions which you can identify. So the breakdown region is out there, which we don't want to really operate our transistor in. And there is a cutoff region. So when you don't apply any input current, uh, the base current, so no current flows through VCE. And there's also something called the saturation region. This is the sloping region here, where we don't apply enough uh, VCE, like the, uh, the voltage across the collector and emitter is not enough to uh, draw all the current like that is uh, um, that, that is flowing through the base actually so that is the that is the problem the free electrons that is generated in the base is not being absorbed by the voltage or um, that is not enough uh, to uh, absorb all the free electrons that is generated there to pull and like say draw it in, uh, into the collector so this is called the saturation region and in between we have the active region and this is where we wanted to operate our um, uh, our transistor if you wanted to use that as an amplifier so let's move on to just like yeah this is what i explained in the four different regions in the previous curve the horizontal part of the curve where the collector current is constant so this is called the active region so if you wanted to use it as an amplifier this is where we use and there's a cutoff region where uh, there's uh, no or like negligible uh, collector current. Okay, so this is not an ideal condition. So always we use the term negligible. So there will be a very small amount of current leak that will be flowing through as soon as you apply some voltage, but it will be in the range of microamperes. And the saturation region is the sloping part uh, of the curve where the positive voltage across the collector and emitter is unable to collect the free electrons injected into the base. So that is the saturation region. And breakdown region. So we should not be operating in this region. So this is like an excessive amount of voltage applied across the collector and emitter. And at this point of time, like say, uh, if you operate at that high of a voltage, then a very high current will flow through and like literally explode uh, the transistor. So those are the four important regions. And here is an uh, example of how uh, an amplifier works. So 
this is what technically we feed into the base. So the base is kind of the input right now. So we apply a small, small voltage and that small voltage is converted into current and it flows through uh, the base. And that small increase in uh, base current will reflect on the collector current. So we know that like as the base increases, base current increases, the collector current increases actually. By what ratio? That is called the gain of an amplifier. So that is pretty much, con uh, it is like a constant value that is fixed for, um, fixed for a transistor. When you purchase a transistor, like in the data sheet, like they will mention like what is the gain of the transistor. So that's usually somewhere between like 100 to 300 or something like that in that range. So what it means is if you apply like say, um, like one volt, so you will get 100 volts as an output, although like that is not the case here, like we can't uh, directly produce that much voltage, but like here we are talking about microampers, like say you produce like say, uh, when you apply like say 10 uh, microampers, you get 100 times more uh, current in the collector and emitter. So that's what an amplifier does. And you can connect to multiple, um, multiple transistors to get more amplification so usually they uh, in circuits we don't just use one transistor we call them a darlington pair so we use them in pairs so that like we get more amplification so that's how we use them as an amplifier but if you wanted to use them as a switch we just like um, operate them in the cutoff and saturation mode. So in these two modes, it's either turned off or turned on. So although in this course, like we'll not be concentrating more on the amplifier side of things, we are just going to concentrate on a, uh, concentrate on like transistor being used as a switch. So uh, since we are not talking more about amplifiers, like let's talk about other types of uh, the principle is like pretty much the same. So let's talk about like other types of transistors. So we have two other types of transistors like that is often used and without these, there are no computers at all. So here, like we have something called JFET and MOSFET. So JFET stands for Junction Field Effect Transistor and MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. Okay, so here, we have instead of uh, emitter and collector we have uh, source and drain so this is like an voltage applied so like imagine this is like kind of a switch so we talked about switch when we talked about switch we had to manually make a contact so here what happens is instead of making manual contacts what we are doing is we are applying a voltage to this gate to turn on and turn off uh, the transistor. No, oh, sorry about that. Wait a minute. Sorry about that. Okay, so here, what happens is like if you apply a negative voltage or zero voltage, so this uh, JFET, like the junction field effect transistor, is turned off. So you need uh, a positive voltage although you have a positive voltage the resistance of this will be there so there will be a small leakage current flowing through this but like without applying a positive voltage you can't turn this on a very similar uh, situation applies uh, in this scenario so this is called a MOSFET unlike uh, this situation so where you have a P substrate and because of this like there's a junction and for this to really operate like you need uh, like a, a positive voltage here so that like the channel becomes wide open and like more electrons are available to be transferred and so you have more current flowing through the system and like say that's when like we consider this as turned on but in this case you have a p-type layer and you also have a gate which is kind of insulated so what happens here is like if you only if you apply a positive voltage like you will have uh, a layer created here that will act as a conductor to 
conduct the electrons from uh, this n-type substrate to this n-type like that is from source to the uh, drain like you need to have like a small path here so that path is created only when you apply a voltage a positive voltage uh, across uh, across the gate and the uh, gate and the source so if you don't apply this like so we will not have any channels formed here so you this will be turned off when you apply something positive a positive voltage is applied then that will attract all the electrons from here and then like a channel is formed and this channel will uh, act as a conductor to uh, turn on this circuit so there are uh, so the advantages of this is like say again we need switch we are uh, operating uh, this with voltage like that what makes it like very important so a switch like when we had to manually turn it on like there are limitations so how long how much time how many times like can we turn it on in a second but like say with a switch like these so you can turn it on and off say uh say your computer like say we call it like 3.2 gigahertz so that means like you can turn it on and off like that many giga is like 10 power 12 that many times in a second so that is how fast you can turn on and turn off a transistor so that is transistor uh, and again we are not going to dig deep uh, about like uh these transistors we aren't going to do a lot of circuits but like we will just uh build some circuits uh which is called uh gates using these transistors that will be useful for us uh in doing some logics actually so later on we'll talk about that but uh this is all about transistors